Psalm of David when he fled from Absalom his son. O Lord, how many are my foes, many are rising against me, and many are saying of my soul, There is no salvation for him in God, Selah. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill, Selah. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people, Selah. So here in Psalm 3, we have the confident prayer of a true believer. This was written, as it says in the superscription there up front, by David when his son Absalom was trying to not only kill him, but also take his throne. So he's got family problems. These family problems have a long and, and um, gory history in the books of Samuel and Kings and Chronicles. Um, and so it's all catching up with him now. A lot of his own sins are catching up with him. His own bad parenting from history is catching up with him. And he's suffering unjustly. Uh, it's, it's not right that Absalom's trying to take his throne, and yet he's not um, an innocent participant in all of this drama. And then on top of that, it's public, you know? I mean, this is making the headlines. CNN is following him around with a camera, and, uh, and Absalom gets the microphone all the time. So the, the layers of problems here uh, just keep on stacking up the more you look into them. And so what does David do? He, believing that God is and that God really does go to bat and go to battle for his own children, he does what he knows how to do. He turns around and starts calling out to God in song. And so he says up front in the first section, how many are my foes? They're accusing me, talking about his own son here and how painful it must be to uh, talk about your son in that in that context and put him in that category. And then verse 3, he paraphrases the two best words in the Bible. Verse 3, he says, But you, O Lord, you, O Yahweh, calls him essentially by his first name, right? His covenant name. But you, O Yahweh, are a shield about me, the glory, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to Yahweh, to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. So what he's saying is, I'm not going to diminish my problems. I'm not. I'm not one of these uh, one of these therapeutic guys that's just going to turn my frown upside down and pretend that life isn't a problem. But what I do know, David says, is that God is bigger, and when I pray, He hears me. And so that's where the gospel is in this. And then, in, you know, at the end of it, he he calls out to Him with confidence. He says, "Arise, O Lord, save me." Oh my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek and you shatter the teeth of the wicked. Now his son, again, is in that category in this psalm. And so he has confidence that God will do the right thing, whatever the means may be. He's not dictating how he wants God to save him. He's just saying, I'm going to let you do what I can't do, what only you can do. I'm not going to try and get in your way or micromanage how you get it done, but execute what is right. And so we've got, the, again, the confident prayer of a true believer who knows that uh, God has applied his grace to the life of the one praying here and that he is under the protective shield of God. That's the gospel, right? God has given us grace where all we've earned really is bloodshed and wrath and separation. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. But God. That's what it all comes down to. This is true of me, my sin, my fallenness, my, my, uh, my resume is, is anti-God and anti-Christ. But God, he has done something that makes us able to pray and ask for help and to expect that he will come through in time of need.